In this video, we're going to be touring Visual Studio. We'll be creating a simple console application for C Sharp, and we'll be looking at the interface and just getting familiar with all of the buttons and what all of them do. Now, my Visual Studio is using what we call dark mode, which makes it black. So your own is probably silver or white in the interface. And I will show you how to change that. But for now, this screen launches whenever you click Visual Studio. And to the left, you see a list of all of your recent projects. So I've, I've had a number of projects working on. I kind of collapsed them so as not to put too much on the screen for display at this point. But your own will probably be empty. But you will have the options to the right asking you to clone or check out open a project folder or create a new project. So I'm going to click create a new project. This launches the different categories of projects that are available to you. So based on the package that you would have installed, you may see more or fewer than I have on my screen. I have quite a few packages installed on my Visual Studio instance, so I'll have more options. But for the purpose of this lesson, we want to create a C-sharp console application so we can actually just search. Instead of trying to scroll through and look and try and figure out which one it is, we can search or we can narrow it down by selecting the actual language that we want, the environment that we want to develop something for, in this case, Windows, and the whether it's desktop or mobile. So once again, based on the packages that you would have installed, then you can get that filter. So I chose C Sharp, Windows, Console, and then I have two options. I have a .NET Core Console app, and I have a .NET Framework Console app. Now note the difference between the two. A .NET Core Console app it creates a project that allows you to create a console application that can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. However, the traditional one up until Core came about was just the regular .NET framework, which created a project that can run on Windows. So I'm just going to continue with the traditional .NET framework application for now, and then we can create a .NET Core one later and compare. So I'm going to proceed with the .NET framework, click Next, and then we give it a name. So I'm going to call this Test Net Console. All right, so in the project name, you want to avoid special characters as much as possible. And also you probably want a camel case to make sure that it's readable. It is very case sensitive. So if you camel case or you have a mixed case word, then rest assured that it will play a very big part in referencing anything inside that project going forward. This might be your default location based on your username or your folder set up on your computer. However, you can always go to browse and change where you want your projects to go. Next, we have the solution name and I'll show you what the project name different from the solution name, but we can actually choose a different solution name as the project goes inside of a solution and a solution can have multiple projects. So these two don't necessarily always have the same name. All right, and then we can select the version of .NET Framework that we want. So you can see that it has backwards compatibility up until .NET Framework 2.0. Like I said, each framework has, you know, the latest one has more recent libraries and support for libraries. But then what works in the latest one may not work on an older computer. And then what was done on the older versions might not be very compatible with, say, Windows 7 and Windows 10. So, you know, choose your battle carefully, know what your environment is. But I have a Windows 10 computer and I like to be on the cutting edge of things. So I'll leave mine at .NET Framework 4.7.2. And then I can just take a cursory glance, make sure everything is good, and then click Create. Once all of the preparations are done, Visual Studio will launch, and then we'll see a code file followed by you know this wonderful interface and some other things. So the first thing I'm going to do, however, is show you how to change the dark mode if you're not already in dark mode and are interested. So you can go to Tools, then select Options, and then the very, very first option in this dialog box is allowing you to choose your color theme. So you're probably on light or blue. You have blue contrast and you have dark. So you can just select dark, click OK, and then you will get this wonderful looking contrasted interface. Now, 
another thing you may note is that your solution explorer is to your right. Mine is to my left. I rearranged it that way because I find it easier to just move to the left to find the file. Sometimes I'm typing code here and then I have to move all the way over to the right. I mean, it's it's really a matter of layout and flexibility and how you prefer it. Now, Visual Studio allows you to put it the way you prefer it. So you can actually drag any um, pane, they call them panes. You can drag, drag any pane and then you can dock it where you want. So you see these little, um squares or rectangles if you drag them into the space then it will kind of put it right in that section that is designated right or i can just leave it right there floating but it's more of a humbug here in the middle of the screen than anything so i like mine to the left so you can do that if you wish if you want more real estate sometimes you're writing code and your panes are to the side uh, you know, open like this and they're taking too much space. You may not have a big screen and you want more space to do certain things. You can always just unpin it. So you see this pin is saying auto hide. So I can make it auto hide. And when that, when I need it, I just click it and it comes out. I do what I'm doing and then it goes back. You'll also see that I have other pins that, you know, you may not have. So as the need arises and you feel that you need a pin, you can just go to view and then you find the pane that you want. So for instance, I have one here that says SQL Server Object Explorer, and that's like a mini database management system inside Visual Studio. For this tutorial, you won't need that, but then for other projects I work on, I use it. So when I expand it, I see things in there, but then I'm not going to be using them for this, for this set of lessons. Now this code file that I had alluded to before, this is our main code file for our console app. So if I want to increase the font size, I can just hold down on the control button and scroll in and you see I can scroll up or down to increase or decrease the size of the font. So I'm just going to increase it a bit so that we can all see exactly what's happening on my screen. In the solution explorer, you see that the file name matches the class name all right so i'm not going to teach you code in this particular lesson i'm just trying to point out some visual cues to make sure that when you see them you know exactly what they mean right so we have the program.cs and c sharp files are stored as .cs the class files get the extension .cs but then you see that you have other files with different extensions like .config and as you put more and more in your project, then you're going to see different file extensions for different purposes. And paying a bit more attention to the solution explorer, you'll notice that you have, and I'll just expand mine a bit, you have the solution, and then you have, and it does have a name. So it says solution, testnet, console, but then under that, you see that it has another, like a child, right? You see that indentation that suggests that this is a child of the solution. So this is the project which then has the project files. So I was saying earlier that the solution doesn't necessarily have to have the same name as a project. As a matter of a fact, within the solution, I can actually click and remove a project if I want, or I can add other projects. So if I wanted two console apps, but I wanted them under the same solution. So when I open the solution, which is my overall collection of projects, then I would see every single project. So I could have one to say, hello world, one to do math, one to do other operations. And that's exactly how we're going to be building out our applications. I'm going to be using one solution, and then we're just going to add a project per code example that we will be doing. Now at the top, and I'm talking about this section that is underneath our toolbar, and you see the little icon. So you know you have that save icon, you have save all that allows you to save all the files. So if you have multiple files open and editing, I just want to make one massive save, you just do save all, but then you notice that they give you keyboard shortcuts along the way. So, you know, it's easier to just do control S while you're writing code than to stop, move your hand from the keyboard and go all the way up here just to click the save or the save all. So along the way, I'm going to be showing you little keyboard shortcuts so that you can, you know, make your coding experience more efficient. Now, as you continue from the save button, you'll see that you have some configuration settings. You have debug, you have release, you have any CPU. So they allow you to kind of determine, okay, what settings should I simulate when I'm about to start my program? So you see that button with the 
green arrow and it says start, you, you can just click that whenever you want to actually run your application or you can press F5. So I'm just going to start this one. So notice we didn't write anything. I'm just going to start it so that you can see what Visual Studio looks like when it's starting a program. So it goes through what it calls a build where it compiles all of your code, all of the code files that you have on the one project. And then it will say, all right, are there any errors or syntax errors that I need? And then it launches what you call that console. So that console looks like command prompt. I notice it just flashed off the screen because, well, it did exactly that. It launched the console and then looked inside of our main function. The main function didn't tell it to do anything. So it came on the screen so that it had nothing to do. So it came off. So that's how console applications work. They run and they do a task until they're completing, they have completed the task and then they just exit automatically. Now that's a very quick tour of Visual Studio. We have a lot of work and a lot of catching up to do. So I'm going to end this one here. And then when we come back, we'll start writing some C-sharp programs.